All right, this is number two mock draft here. Not sure what we're calling these, but we're going to do another seven round Dallas Cowboys mock draft. And I am just going to uh, use the public uh, PFF board. I'm, I'm going to go right down the middle. All the other settings are just going to stay the same. Could maybe turn randomness down. Nah. Uh, Keep a little bit of randomness, but uh, the public versus PFF board should give us a nice like mix of uh, what people are expecting versus what uh, PFF is uh, determining. So let's go ahead, enter the draft again. Keep it on fast, and so we're not really going to have a chance to trade uh, before our picks, but we might trade during our picks. So let's go ahead and start this draft. There we go. Pl players flying off the board. That joke might get old. Okay. Well, here we are. Interesting enough. We got a uh, uh, Kool-Aid McKinsky, JPJ, Jackson Powers, Johnson, Graham Barton, who I took in the first one, uh, Tyler Newbin, Peyton Wilson, Jr. And Brian Thomas or pay Peyton Wilson and Brian Thomas, Jr. And there's a uh, Tyler Guyton too. Almost everyone in the league wants to trade with us. We're just going to look at this because definitely want to take Jackson Powers, Johnson. It lines up perfectly with uh, where people are taking them. But we could trade back with the Buccaneers. Now, my only fear is that we're going to lose Jackson Power, Powers Johnson, which is the obvious pick here in terms of need and then also just like skill. If we do lose Max 2, say Kool-Aid and Jackson or Jackson and Graham or Graham and Kool-Aid, we could still take JPJ in that. And then there's also Peyton Wilson and Brian Thomas Jr., so it's like, do I want to go with what the obvious pick is or do I just want to see what we can get from Tampa Bay? I'm just going to see what we can get. So they're not going to take a third. They, we have a really good chance. Or sorry, they're not going to take a second. We have a really good chance of getting their third. But what if we did this? What if we traded our first, moved back two, got 89 and 92. So they actually move up in both, but we get two of their picks. See if they'll throw in that fourth round too. Okay, and we get the fourth round. I mean, this is kind of a no-brainer, guys. 17% chance. I mean, obviously, let's let's try for this. Let's just see what happens. No, they're not going to take that. Okay. I'm going to go ahead and do this trade. I think it's I think we pick up a lot of picks and I like it. And uh, it makes sense that the Cowboys move back. We have a pretty good chance of getting it too. So uh we're trading our our first overall and third overall for their first, third a third that they got from Detroit and their fourth round pick. They did not accept. So we had to sweeten the pot or, or take one off. And I'd rather sweeten the pot with say, giving up 233 or 234. Let's try 244. There we go. Boom. So we traded back in two of our rounds and, and gave away our seventh round pick as well, but picked up his first third, another third and a fourth. I don't mind that. And we can still get Jackson Powers Johnson. I mean, this is how we want to do. So I think that makes the most sense, guys. We go with JPJ, solidify that O-line, have a really quick look. Do we even need to really uh, go too deep into his report here? Powers Johnson possesses starting caliber power and fit fitness rates at center or guard for both zone or man gap blocking concepts. He is dominant enough at his position to be considered a top 20 talent. We're taking him. No questions asked. And we got a lot of picks now. This is great. It was a great move. Jerry Jones made a great move there. Next, we can look at, so we got an O-line. Of course, there's these edges here, which are not against. So we need a run, a run stop edge. Lots of hurries from uh, Jonah Ellis, an edge from the Utes. But his run defense grade, not very good. Pass grades right up there. And his true pass set, pass rush grade. Is right up there as well, too. So he's a rusher, 6'2", 246. For him to remain, for Jonah Ellis to remain a difference maker like he was in 2023, he will have to get stronger. If he can add weight but remain as quick and flexible, uh, he can be a, an impactful pass rusher. Okay. Well, you know, we got to head over to the NFL draft bus, get a little look-ski at this guy. Look at him. Okay. I mean, not what I was expecting, but hey, 17th ranked defensive lineman, fairly average, if not below average in most of his traits. And he's a pass rusher through and through. Not really a guy that I think that we need. So we'll also look here at Marshall Nealand. 
Now, Marshall Le- Nealon looks way more like a guy who we need outside tackle, run blocker, and pass rusher. Had more hurries than uh, Ellis, and he had six sacks, so a little less sacks, but he's a, he's a bigger boy, 6'3", 275. Overall, his competition wasn't the best, but he absolutely dominated dominated it, especially in 2023. NFL teams will love his passion and physicality. He has the body, explosiveness, and mentality of an NFL contributor. I mean, that's positive. And this is really a silly pick if I go this way. The foundation of any team is the O-line. So if we can disrupt teams' O-lines, can't be mad of it. And I love this guy's photo. This is a fun photo. Big wingspan on his measurable, six foot three, two sixty seven. So he's got that good weight, 267. They have him 275. Uh, not the fastest, but he's got a really good shuttle. So he's quick with that lateral movement. Same with the three cone, though. Not the strongest in his bench, but really not looking for that endurance, looking for that initial power. Uh, he's not going to be pushing guys 21 times, hopefully, to get to the quarterback. He's just going to have to shove him once or twice. And we're looking for how much power he has there. So Bench press, not the, necessarily the best stat, actually, to determine that. Very good run defense and pass rusher. Let's just look at what we got here. So we do have more picks for third round. So I kind of would not be against taking this guy. Let's just look really quick at Chris Jenkins again. I've looked at this guy a million times, and I'll just do it one more. He's not, I don't really care to get, I mean, sacks are great, but that's not really what we're looking for with the defensive interior. He's a little light, though, 305. Jenkins is one of the strongest players in the entire draft class, but his arm length limitations and lack of pass rush uh, profile will likely limit him, his draft stock, to a mid to late day second round. However, his high floor presents starting potential in a 4-3 screen. Keep, you know, you know what I'm saying. Get a little looks, get this guy. Again, looked at him too many times. Actually, I do not remember looking at Chris Jenkins on draft buzz. Little light, though, for a defensive lineman. I just want to see that up in the 320s TBH. Not saying he couldn't get there. Pretty power, average or above average power in both his broad jump and his bench. He's also really good at run defense. So I think for the need, we got to go with Jenkins. And we are going to take Chris Jenkins for the need, rank 60th. Um, it's a little light like in theory, but you know, he can probably put on that 20 pounds throughout the year. Uh, definitely want to see him rival Mozzie Smith. And he's just got a really good run grade. Not that I don't love Marshawn Nealon, but I think this is the way. All right. Welcome to the team, Chris Jenkins. Okay. So third round, I think this is where we could go ahead, take Trey Benson, get that running back situation situated we do not need a lineman with that first round pick and benson's just standing out he's a big body boy 6'1 223 benson brings an nf brings nfl building athleticism to the table in all categories of explosiveness explore explosiveness but he is too focused on athletic abilities and needs more patience in order to maximize his athletic gifts and be more than a committee running back He's the 86th ranked average draft position is 92.3. So right in between. And I don't really know anyone else here. Who would you want to go with to try to like. Um, to, to not get a caliber like Trey Benson. Just going to read his strengths for the uh, S and G's of it all. Powerful build, good size and strength in his legs. Explosive athlete, athlete with difference making burst and top speed. Can convert speed to power quickly for yards after contact. Fundamentally sound pass blocker with a good base and the strength to hold up. Uh, a little stiff in his lateral movements. These are the cons. Base is narrow, which makes it easy for him to get tripped up. High mi- missed tackle forced is more about speed to power. Uh, is an athlete first. So he tends to miss open cutback lanes in favor of getting to the sidelines. Let passes get into body. I liked what Rico Dowdle did too. So pairing him with a guy who's a, who's a big body. Let's do it. Bring him on. Trey Benson, welcome to the team. And look at that. We're already back on the board. That's what these trades do for you, mate. Round three. So that was our first round three pick. This is our second round three pick. We have a chance here. 
to either trade back or go ha- go out and get Brendan Rice. Might be too early for Rice, but hey, this is almost a freebie. Our next pick, we could trade back to and get our Trey Lance pick back. I mean, it's smart to spend on the O-line, but I just don't think that we need it, even though like this guy looks really good, Christian Mahogany. 6'3", 322. Guard only and a powerful run blocker. It's only a tackle. Or guard. How about this Dominic Booney? He's played some guard and tackle. Didn't play in 2021. Had had a an okay uh, 2022 season and then a really good 2023 season. Allowed only one hit in his entire uh, last three seasons. Pooney is much improved from 2022 to 2023, and if he continues on his current trajectory, he has the powerful foul size to earn a rotation role at guard with starting potential. A massive player who is tough to get around from size alone has the power to displace people when he gets them between the shoulders. Poor pad level in 2022, but improved in 2023. He might be a hindrance at guard. Okay. Upright stance um, after the snap exposed his chest and makes him too easy to manipulate. Oh, exposes his chest. Okay. Uh, top heavy in his weight, but played with a flatter back in 2023 and does not maintain blocks on tape. I have to say, I don't love him. If they're thinking he's going to play guard, maybe these are better guards to pick up here. This is a pure guard, left guard, which means we can kick Tyler Smith outside. Let's go have a look at Mason McCormick. Okay, Mason McCormick looking a little bit like a convict. I like that. Six foot four, three oh nine from South Dakota State, number thirty on the OL rankings, and he's got a lot of good, um, a good things about him. He's he's ninety fourth percentile in the shuttle, eighty sixth percentile in the ten yard, uh, his forty eighty fourth. So he's got some speed on him. Uh, vertical, 99%. Broad jump, 98%. That just means he's got really powerful legs, and I like that. Three cone, 7.59. He's really good at pass blocking, and he's very good at run blocking. So this guy is probably who we're going to take. But let's look at Christian Mahogany. Like a uh, big Superman here. 6'3", 314, number 19 on the OL. And this guy's even better. 94 vertical, 89 on the broad, shuttle, 10 yard. And uh, the shuttle, the 10 yard, and his 40 are all above 83% uh, percentile or in the 83rd percent percentile. I'm stuttering here. Pass block and run block are just a little bit lower. Something just doesn't rub me rub me right with him. So let me just really quickly look at Mary's Leo Fowl. was decent. He's 6'2", 239. He's a uh, linebacker here. Louis is a powerful downhill linebacker who attacks ball carriers and blocks with bad intentions. His instincts and feel for the spot uh, spot zone coverage still need work. If he is to be relied upon consistently. He is projected as a contributor inside linebacker for either 4-3 or 3-4 defenses. Not necessarily at the best metrics. Pretty much box. Let's go ahead and see what he looks like. This is the biggest decision of the draft, guys. Oh, wow. I mean... Unassuming, but he's the 11th ranked. He's got a very big span. That's good. 90th percentile for that. It's just not that powerful, man. I can't commit to that. Love the name, love the hair, but we have to pass. Let's shore up with Mason McCormick. Welcome to the team guard. You know, hope you, hopefully you can make it onto the starting roster. And of course, he would be then put in guard and we could slide Tyler over to left tackle. And our O line is pretty set. Two rookies, though. So, Banking on a lot there. All right, we're at our. We got 125 back. Uh, one bel- one back from our pick that we traded for Trey Lance um, to the San Francisco 49ers, and this one we traded with Tampa Bay. So again, this is from our trade that we made. And let's look at Malik Washington or Malik Washington. I still don't know how to say that name properly. Okay, I like that he's in in his pads. He's saying no. I don't want to be seen outside of my pads. He's small, five foot eight, one ninety one, which is good weight for five foot eight. Let me tell you, I'm five foot eight. I do not. I weigh like one fifty five, one sixty. If I've had some drinks, eighteenth ranked. He he has the most receptions. He's very powerful, eighty one percentile, and uh, and he's got a good bench. So that's you know is what it is. Good vertical though, forty two point five. Wow, 
99th percentile. And his speed is just kind of average. But look at this. Hands, 90%. Short receiving, 88. Intermediate routes, 92. Deep threat, 92. Not good at blocking. But when he's targeted, the QB has a 101.2 rating. Looking at a scouting report, excellent field vision, adapt at finding soft spots in zone coverage, reliable hands, consistently secures the ball in traffic, agile and elusive after the catch, uh, sharp route running skills, strong worth ethic, good football IQ, versatile, clutch performance tends to make big plays in critical moments. Uh, limited size and stature, lacks elite top end speed, can struggle against physical press coverage, limited experience in a diverse root tree, needs to improve blocking to be more effective in the run game before his transfer to Virginia, put up the mo up mostly pedestrian numbers at Northwestern. Well, that's okay. Shows that if you get someone who can throw in the ball, he can uh, make moves. He's the type of guy he got who, once he gets the ball in his hand, he's going to be shifty. I'm kind of leaning towards a wide receiver here. We do need a linebacker. But I think we're just going to have to wait. 140, there's Cedric Gray. But is this too, is he too much to pass up on? For my money, yeah. We're going to go ahead and take Malik Washington, Malik Washington, however you want to say it. Maybe not really the big body that I'm looking for, but, you know, the more I'm thinking about it, a tight end can fill that role. And we got Jake Ferguson, Fergalicious himself, and uh, Hendershot and Stevens coming back from that injury. I'd like to see what that guy can do. So we... We, we got that covered with tight ends. Welcome to the team, Malik Washington, Malik Washington. Okay, feeling good about this draft. Opening up, we definitely want to look for a linebacker now. We're in the fifth round. We just want the linebackers. Steely Chambers, or Steel Chambers. He's more of a coverage back, 6'1", 232. I don't think like that's the guy we're looking for. Oh, Tyrod Hooper had a really bad 2023, but his 2022 was not... Not so bad. He seemed to really almost play the exact same um, amount of uh, snaps at that uh, position or by alignment there throughout his entire career. Where did he falter? Just was not good at, at stopping the run. 6'2", 221, again, just not the guy we're looking for. Jalen Ford, we drafted in the first one, so we kind of got a pass on him. Curtis Jacobs. Darius Muasau. Now we're just moving really far back. I think we had to go kind of not necessarily BPA, but now this is something interesting. We got this uh, Western Kentucky Hilltoppers and Austin Reed quarterback. Not really anything special to look at at first glance. 6'2", 220. I like that size. I don't think we got an analysis here, so let's go have a look at him. On the old NFL draft buzz. Not only do we get to see what he looks like, but we also get uh, a nice breakdown. <laughs> but he doesn't necessarily look like a QB. He looks quite young, but he is a senior and he's the 12th ranked QB. So, I mean, nothing, nothing ex exceptional about him on his uh, uh, measurables, but let's see what his ratings are. So his release speed is 83%. That's good. He can get the ball out of his hands quickly. He doesn't really have anything good or bad about his short or medium passing. His long passing is a little bit better, though, so that's interesting. And he's a little bit above average with his rush scramble. Quick look at his scouting report. Reed has a quick release and live arm. Tight spirals, and Reed shows good touch at the intermediate levels. Ball placement is a strength. From a physical standpoint, a prototype quarterback, okay, possesses an NFL arm, generally accurate on intermediate and short throws, and Reed often holds the ball too long, but he does have a quick release, so he can, he can learn that. Uh, sales throws to either sideline, receivers make him look good with acrobatic catches. Okay, well, we got some guys who can make acrobatic catches. His mechanics are hit or miss as he struggles to remain consistent. That's a, these, are, these are things I think that he can learn. What about Joe Milton? 6'5", 235. Okay, Milton has NFL tools, but lack of processing instant and accuracy to be considered a potential starter. You know what we got to do. Go have a look. I think we're going to take one of these quarterbacks here. TBH, guys. So he's ranked 10. So Joe Mo Milton on draft buzz is ranked over Reed. Okay, Milton has a lot more better measurables. That's one thing to take into consideration. 478 speed, 
121 uh, broad jump, 93 percentile for his at the combine. Nice big span too. And he's a bigger body, 6'5", 235. His defense was better too that he played against. Let's compare that. Yeah, quite a bit better. So 75% is the average rating compared to 69 for Reed. Uh, release speed's up there. I think we go with Milton because this is an exceptional arm strength, demonstrates quick acceleration, displays commendable pocket awareness, significant size and stature, not just a stationary pocket passer. Uh, while he pr- pro- uh, while his processing speed may mean tuny, his velocity compensates by closing tight windows efficiently, resistant to sloppy tackle attempts, and has a light and quick release. Accurate and touch in his passing game re- require refinement. That's okay. We're looking to give him a year of, of work at least, if in fact we don't get a deal with that done. While physically gifted, he's on the older side for a rookie at 24. That's okay. Quarterbacks, you know, it's not a cutoff at 30 like some positions. Questions linger about his field reading capabilities uh, and tends to pr- be predictable under pressure. Well, either of these guys are going to be a work in progress, but I think the fundamentals here of Milton just make more sense. We're going to take Milton in the fifth round. Welcome to the team, Joe Milton the third. So we got two picks left here. Sixth round pick at number 216, Jace McQuillan. And I do like to take this kid. I do like to take this kid. And we might just do that. I mean, he's he's got things to work on. 5'11", 212. You know, he does catch the ball when it's thrown to him, but he doesn't get the ball thrown to him uh, too much. We'll have another quick look ski at him. I looked at him before. I forget it, who it was at, maybe with Jay Tuck when he was on. But I like to refresh my memory here. Kind of got a silly little photo there. 5'10", 221, they have him. Big hands, whatever that means. Probably good for his girlfriends. <laughs> Defensive rating, 77%, so that's good. Good to know that he played against a good competition. Uh, he's got very good rushing. He can break tackles a little bit more above average than the average bear. His receiving is pretty average, and he can't really block. And I don't know. Now let's look at Daquan Hardy. Daquan Hardy. 5'9", 181. Hardy is a smaller slot corner who plays with a lot of confidence despite his size. He's quick, but likely lacks the top gear speed necessary for successful secondary play at the next level. So let's just hold off on that. If he, if he was big and slow or uh, small and fast, we could deal with that. But we'll give a quick look at it at if he uh, has any metrics here from, or measurables, sorry, from the combine. His 40 is not bad. 438? They're saying that he's slow. Big vertical, too, so he can get up there. Above average tackler, run defense is above average. His coverage is average, zone is average, and man press is average. So I'm going to have a look at him. Fast and agile. Hardy sticks to receivers and close to the ball. Does a good job of getting his head around in time when playing with his back to the line. Uh, Has a nice low back pedal. Shows the click and close ability to back pedal and the ball skills to make plays. Can get up on the line of scrimmage and deliver a solid punch early in routes. And he trusts his eyes with very good awareness. Size is the biggest issue. That's what they say. Hardy overcomes his lack of bulk with a sharp jaw and fighter's approach. But can he overmatch against NFL caliber number one receivers? We'll, we, I'm willing to find out. Is not an asset in run stopping. Um, looking tentative and underpowered when stepping up against the run. Well, I just want him to coverage. His coverage ain't best. It doesn't really. His comparables here don't really line up with what we're seeing in that scouting report. So. I'm a little confused. Two in, two touchdowns, but two interceptions. And the pass rating was up. Uh, but you see that he here he was playing both corner and slot. It looked like he had a, a lot more defensive snaps than he did in 2022. Bringing in a guy like that, or perhaps Miles Harden, one quick look at him. Because these guys can also fill a need for our special teams too. And that's why I don't mind going after him. 5'11", 195, so better body. But nothing stands out except for a shuttle. Roughly the same offensive rating. His tackling is is a is a you know well above average. Run defense almost well above average. I think this guy might be the dude. He's a nice blend of length, speed, and quickness. Fits best in a zone system. Miles Harden is savvy using his hands to get to the ball without dragging, drawing flags. Willing to in run support. 
coming downhill quickly. Excellent. He's physical at the line of scrimmage and can get up on the line of scrimmage and deliver a solid punch early in routes. Gave up far too many big plays in college. Works hard in run stop, but is going to be walled off often. Uh, and receivers can arm bar downfield to create separation. And these are things that he can pro- potentially learn on, but his physical gifts are nice. Six foot, 210, or 5'11, what do they have, Matt? And 5'11, 195. So he's, he's right in there for, for being a big enough body to be able to fight with these wide receivers. I say we, we pull the trigger on Miles Harden a little bit early. We could trade back, but hey, that'll take this up, take us too long. So we're going to take Miles Harden, uh, cornerback out of South Dakota. Welcome to the team. Kind of these same guys are rolling through. Isaiah Davis, 6'1", 220, really good rank. Isaiah Davis, running back from South Dakota, 12, 6 foot, 218, big hands, just average um, measurements except for his bench. He's got that strong, powerful chest, and rushing is his game. He's also not too bad at, at run blocking and pass blocking. He's average at least, and that's something they could work on. He's not a bad receiver either. So scouting report, difficult to bring down one-on-one in space, possesses quick feet and straight line speed, but doesn't have that elite burst. That's okay. Uh, you know, get to get 10 yards. That's what we're looking for. Davis has a prototypical running back build, uh, well proportioned and thick throughout the lower body. Ooh, he consistently falls forward. Davis blends good speed and size, as well as the competitive demeanor of a playmaker, well built with a thick frame and powerful low, lower body. The negatives, only three. Davis could stand to get smaller when skiing through traffic. Davis doesn't always show great hands. He's not going to threaten to he's not going to threaten to take the top off defense. Those are just not big enough for me. And I'd like to create a three-headed monster here in Dallas, Texas. So we're going to go ahead and our last pick of the draft, bring on Isaiah Davis Davis. Welcome to the team. I like this draft. I think though we made some moves. We got some essentials in the beginning of the draft, and that allowed us to kind of you know, go ahead and draft a quarterback in the fifth round. Why not? Getting our grade. I'm going to download that right now. Let's have a look here. So if you remember, we traded back our first pick. We traded our first, the 24th overall, our, our third, the 87th overall, and our seventh, the 244th pick. And we got in return um, the 26th overall, their first pick, 26th overall, their third round, two third rounds, 89th and 92 overall, and then a fourth round pick, 125 overall. So I think that's good. We gave, we dropped down two slots and picked up a whole bunch of slots uh, and got that fourth round pick. So, you know, I'm happy. And this is how the draft went. We still ended up in the first round at 26, getting Jackson Powers Johnson, uh, center from Oregon. In the second round at the 56 pick, we got defensive interior Chris Jenkins from Michigan. Uh, we got round three, our 89th overall pick. Uh, halfback Trey Benson from Florida State. Uh, third round, we got a, another third round pick. Three picks later, 92, we got our guard, Mason McCormick. Got a low grade on that C+. Plus. We'll see what we, what we finished here overall. Um, round four, at, with the 125th pick, we took wide receiver Malik, or Malik Washington from Virginia. Uh, round five, uh, with the 174th pick, we took Joe Milton the third from Tennessee, quarterback. You know why not? Let's 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 see what he, this kid's got. Round six at 216, cornerback Miles Harden from South Dakota, and round seven at 233, halfback Isaiah Davis, big body boy from South Dakota State. Overall, we got an A minus. Hey, I ain't bad at that. Uh, but go ahead, let us let me know what you think, what you agree with, what you disagree with in the comments. And uh, if there's someone who, you know, I missed up on, please let us know who that is and why we should have took him instead. All right. Thanks for watching. Crack him if you got it.